camp yeah. opened up and the NILs from um, collectives from Columbus did something very co- cool in association with the Ohio State Athletic Department. They opened up practice on Thursday and Friday, uh, practice one and two from fall camp to spectators, 500 for each day, sold out both days at $30 a pop for 500 plus $10 for parking, which went to the university. Uh, but $30, your $30 ticket for the two-hour practice, two-hour and change practice, went to the NIL collectives. Chris, I was there, man. I know you've got questions, and oh, I know the listeners so got many. questions. If you have questions from what I saw, if you weren't there, go ahead and put those questions in the comment section uh, of the respective uh, medium in which you are getting this live episode. Chris, fire away, man. All right, so obviously there's two big ones. First of all, what did you think of the offensive line? Now, you know, we've heard we've we've heard speculation that it's Josh Fryer at uh, one tackle, and we've heard Zen Mikowski. We've heard J- Josh, you know, call me Jimmy Simmons. We've heard Tegra Shabola. We heard Luke Montgomery's name pulled up. Now, what I heard was, Zen Mikowski was getting a lot of the first team reps. He was. So what did you think of how the line looked? And how concerned are you still about that offensive line? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're not good. They're not good. It, every time they fall start, they make them run a lap. Okay. Now I'm going to let me back up. That's probably so the, why Josh Fryer is looking so good in practice. <laughs> the jersey's fitting a lot better because he's up there running laps. He's lost a lot of weight, but he's lazy. I hope he gets this. Dude, stop cutting off your – even when they're in line and they are stretching, he cuts off his stretches five seconds into the 10-second stretch. Stop it. You're lazy. Quit being – Lazy. That is, I'm telling you, Chris, he's going to get burnt because he's lazy. Sounds to me like he needs to get benched because he's lazy. Ticked me off. I'm watching him. He's leading the offensive lineman and stretching, and they're counting the 10 on their stretches, and he's stopping his stretch halfway through every single time. If you're still that injured, we're in trouble. He's your starting left tackle. He's your, he's supposed to be an upperclassman. It was not good. Tegra Shabola ran more laps Friday than anybody else because he kept false starting. Do you want to know why the freshman's in there and competing? We're bad. bad. We're bad. It's not gotten any better. Now, I will give you a positive. They can flat out run block, Chris. They are road graders. When we when we were doing uh, running drills, seven on seven, well, 11 on <coughs> 11-on-11 11 11 thump, no tackle, but thump. Yeah, they were, they were making huge holes. They can run block. They cannot pass block on the edges. They are dangerously bad still. That, that's kind of concerning, but at the same time, do you think Ryan Day can make it work? Can Ryan Day change his game plan to where he gives that ball off a little bit more often and, and takes advantage of that, that strength that they do have? He's going to have to. Now, the interior offensive line is really, really good. Hensman's going to win that job. Carson Hensman's going to be the same. Now, I did hear that Jacob James was taking some snaps with the first team. They're going 50-50, but Hensman looks like a veteran. I almost wish one of them could kick outside. Yeah, Um, that was my next question. You so think there was potential for that to happen. Yes. Um, so absolutely. I don't know that there's potential for that to happen, but they might have to find a way to to put someone look or, at someone different on the outside. Or, or do you think they might bump one of them over to guard and slide Donovan Jackson off the tackle? He's he's not he's not going to. Okay, so that's the it's, offensive line, but Obviously, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had better news to report to you. 
They're they are great at run blocking. They on but the tackles look lost. Too many false starts. Uh, losing one on one battles still a lot. And and yet I under okay I get it. JTT's really good. Jack Sawyer's really good. I understand that. But you, you you've you've got to step your game up, guys. Yeah. You're gonna have to step your game up, or it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rough season. So that leads to the question: How did the quarterbacks look? Everyone's assuming it's McCord's job to lose, but is this really a competition? And is there going to be a need for Devin Brown given the weakness at tackle right now? Um, it's a competition. It is flat out a competition. What did you see? Who did you okay. think was better? All right. <clears throat> if I had to pick a quarterback to start today, if we if we're playing Notre Dame tomorrow, and it's like and and Ryan Day called me up, said Bogsy, I need your honest opinion. Who gives us the better chance to win the game? I'm going Devin Brown because he's a playmaker. Yeah. Here's why. <clears throat> I found a big flaw in Kyle McCord's game, watching it with my own eyes up close. When he receives the snap, he's carrying the ball too low. It's below his chest. It's right above his navel. It elongates the motion to throw. Devin Brown's got it up here by his chin, okay, which is where you're supposed to carry it. Devin Brown looks like an athlete. His escapability looks good. They went to seven-on-seven seven drills, second part. We had to put our cell phones away. They warned you multiple times. No pictures, no videos. Put your cell phones away. Seven on seven. Here we go live. First play, first pass. Kyle McCord throws a pick six. Denzel picked him. A little out route. He was either Egbuka or Harrison Jr. Won a little out route. Denzel jumps the route. Boom, pick six the other way. Forget about it. That little hitch, the elongated delivery that Kyle has. It's it allows the defense just that split second more to bat more balls down and to and to get more interceptions. Number two, he's high over the middle on intermediate passes. He's going to get one of our receivers destroyed. Way too. They're having to jump on over the middle intermediate passes that he throws. Devin Brown is on the money. Here's where he's got Devin Brown beat. His long ball is beautiful. He throws a gorgeous long ball. The trajectory of it is nice. Um, the speed of it looks good. It's a perfect spiral. He hits guys in, in stride when they're going deep. Brown struggles after 15 yards on his passes. 5 to 15 yards, he's deadly. Beyond that, he's underthrowing a little bit um, compared to McCord. That's the difference. Brown looks more uh, – uh, Devin Brown looks more athletic – he looks more accurate on the on the intermediate stuff, and he's also quicker to look for his out. You know, where's my tight end or my running back? If my number one or two routes not open, boom, I'm going to get rid of the football. Kyle McCord will hold on to the ball a little bit longer, and I think maybe that's one more year of time in the system of saying on a longer developing play, I've got a receiver open down deep. That's what I saw. If I'm if I'm if I'm Ryan Day, with the troubles we have on the offensive line, Devin Brown, to me, is your better go. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you talked about Denzel getting that pick six on the course first pass. Let's talk about the DBs a little bit. We've heard that they are very much improved this season. Mm-hmm. So, are they really as improved as, you, as they say? What are your thoughts based on what you saw at practice and who do you think is going to be starting? Now, we know Denzel Burke is going to get that seat in the cornerback one spot. Yeah. Who's going to start opposite this, this guy? I mean, is it going to be Jair Brown? Is it going to be Igben, Igbenison? Is it going to be Hancock? And, and who are the starting safeties? I mean, I'm hearing Sonny Styles is getting a lot of playing time. So, so uh, Denzel looks awesome. He blanketed Marvin Harrison Jr. for most of the practice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I swear to you, I kid you not. Um, if you can cover him, you can cover anyone at the college level. Yes, he's if he plays like he did Friday, he is All-American at corner. He, he, he played 
that well. He looked great. Um, at the other cornerback position, you had the uh, transfer from Ole Miss, um, David Ig- – no, uh, Davison Igbenosa. Igbenosa. Um, he he looks – he's physical. He's a very physical, very handsy cornerback. He did really well. Um, at the safety positions, they are running a lot of people in. They looked bad deep they are still out of position there was one time where practice almost stopped because jim knowles was having a conniption he dropped several f-bombs on him one of the one of the uh defensive backs coach a uh, perry perry um literally oh, wow. during the play grabbed a player's by the back jersey because he was out of position they know what the problem is and it's still a problem I don't understand why they have Sonny in the slot and they don't have him deep. They put him up there because he's more physical. They think he can do a better job with tight ends. He can he can help in the running game because he's a bigger safety. That's why he's up there. Um, with and then Lathan Ransom as well. But deep is an issue, guys. It's still they still let receivers get behind him. And speaking of receivers, are you ready for this? We saw him flash. In the spring game, Chris, I'm here to tell you right now, Carnell Tate's starting. He is going to jump Julian Fleming, and the reaction that Julian Fleming had on a drop where he threw his helmet in practice tells me everything I need to know. Tate's passed him. I would not be surprised if you don't see Julian Fleming in the transfer portal at some point. Carnell Tate is amazing. He is every bit better at this stage of his career as a freshman than any other receiver I have seen at Ohio State. And that includes the guy on the other side of the field, Marvin Harrison Jr., who's the All-American. Wow. He is awesome. He had a double move where he left the defensive back on his butt 10 yards deep. Wide open touchdown. He is fantastic. Carnell Tate, buy stock in the kid right now. He is awesome. And this is a kid who just lost his mother. Yeah. And is playing and playing emotional, obviously. He is fantastic, guys. That that's your little um uh no, Robert Allen. It was not Devin Brown. It was Kyle McCord had to pick six, my friend. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's what I, that's what I saw. Okay. What about, uh, the linebacker position? You know, we know about Tommy, we know about Steele. They're going to be the guys. How much of CJ Hicks did you get the opportunity to see? And do you think that he's got the ability to really see the field a lot this year? So CJ's being, um, he's back up. They're 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 rotating they're rotating five guys at the li- at the two linebacker positions, well four guys at the two and then CJ's getting a lot of play as that third linebacker that hybrid linebacker, mm-hmm. um, so obviously Steele and Tommy are one and two they look fantastic they're never out of position they're making plays um, they look they looked every bit the part that they were last year okay. After that, you at the linebacker position, you had Cody Simon in a lot, okay? And then you had, um, believe it or not, you had um, Jordan Hancock. Really? Yeah, Jordan Hancock's playing linebacker now. He's the other one they're rotating in. And then at that hybrid linebacker spot that they, whatever they want to call it, yeah. that's CJ's. That's kind of his baby right now. And um, the other the other guy that they kind of had in that that hybrid position um, that I saw, um, oh, he was he was injured last year. Um, Mitchell Melton. Mitchell Melton. Thank you. No, no, no. Was it? Yeah. 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 So those are the six guys you're seeing a lot. Uh, Gabe Powers, Reed Carrico got in a little bit, um, but that's kind of what we what what we saw. You got any more questions before I run through these real quick? I've got one more, obviously. 
So I know it's only the first week of practice. You know Ryan Day wants to have you know his starting lineup, especially an offense figured out, the offensive line, quarterback specific. What kind of a timeline do you think we're looking at there? And when he does make that determination, who, if anyone, enters the transfer portal? I am sh- I'll am i be shocked if he makes that determination within two weeks. When he could kind of let the cat out of the bag that it's going to take as long as it's going to take, it's because neither one of these guys has separated themselves from the other one. Um, if, if, if I was a betting man... I would say you won't hear until the week before Indiana which one is going to get the first team reps going in to get to Indiana. And I think that's how they'll, they'll word it. What you think they'll split time versus Indiana? No, I don't think so. That's a dangerous scenario to put yourself it in. Is. Um, But he might not have another option. Here's what's crazy. You ready for this? The freshman from South Dakota or wherever Lincoln, he was from, Reinholds, yeah. Lincoln, looks pretty good. Yeah, everybody's very high on the young man. He, I'll tell you what, he it, did I, not did not I, look that much of a drop off from the from the other two. In all honesty, so so what you're saying is, if one of them should enter the transfer portal, we're solid as a backup. Yeah, I at, think at least so. Almost as solid as we would have been had they stayed. For a true freshman, yeah, I think so. And then the kid from Oregon State, yeah. who's like 26 years old. The field um, general there, yeah. He He's not bad either. He's serviceable. Absolutely. He he could win a lot of Big Ten games. And, and, and I'll tell you, the other thing that's good about him is the young man is smart and he can run. Yeah. <laughs> Which right, it sounds right. like we may need. Let's get, let's get through some of these here, okay? Okay, let's do it. Sonny Styles, both offensive tackle positions. That's a question. Sonny Styles looks great. He's huge. He's, I mean, he's, he's really built by the way, chip train him. Holy smokes. He's a, Dude's a Greek dude. God. That man needs to be fullback. He'll hurt people. He will absolutely hurt people. Offensive Ryan tackle Day position. Using a fullback. <laughs> hey, well, he did with the tight end kind of. Yeah. Yeah. O-line and QB. I think we answered that one already. Larry uh, has the O-line made improvements. I would say, yeah. The, in the run game and interior. Um, and is the freshman as good as advertised? I think he's talking about Lincoln, maybe. Yeah. Or is he? Or yeah. Luke Montgomery. Oh, or Luke Montgomery. Luke's pretty good. He he didn't have any false starts that I recall. So Could that's be better than <laughs> better than some of the other starters. Um, let's see here. This isn't a question, but pretty cool. Robert Allen says, for your information, I was listening to you when I was in that state up north. <laughs> oh, the the intro OH got me flipped off. <laughs> <laughs> that a boy, that a boy, Robert. Oh, that a boy. So, Eric, one thing we didn't touch on: uh, the running backs. Is everybody looking healthy? And are we oh, seeing got, a little I bit guess, of everybody? Yeah. So, I got some thoughts on that too. So, Donald Hoffer says, "Has the defense been wrapping up on tackling? They weren't tackling. They were, they were not in full pads. They only had their shoulder pads on, helmets, and they That's were what, thud. Next week, they were thud yeah. tackling. So, I can't answer that question yet, Donald. Um. What was your question? Running backs. Yeah. yeah. So, so Carl and I, my buddy Carl and I, we're sitting at the 30 yard line uh, on field two. You couldn't go to field one. Um, and the running backs were warming up at the beginning of the practice, literally right in front of me. Um, Mayan Williams has the biggest freaking calf muscles I have ever seen in my life, by the <laughs> way. Uh, here's, here's the pecking order, in my opinion, based off of what I saw. Mayan and Travian are 1A and 1B. Chip Traianum is the backup to those two. They are still trying to, I think, work Evan Pryor back into getting comfortable again. Um, they're going to be gentle with him, I believe. And the um, freshman, sophomore now this year, Dallin Hayden. Um, Dallin Hayden, is much bigger than he looked like on TV. Uh, which so here's the question, though. Are we going to be able to keep him? I mean, this is a kid who got 500-plus yards last season as a freshman. Is he going to set four deep, five? Well, you're yards? you're going to lose three of those guys at the end of the season. Right. So that opens up a lot of opportunity next year. But will he have the patience to sit through that? We'll see. If, it's, if this year's like last year, he's not going to have to wait long. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Corey's in the house. What up, Corey? Hey, miss you guys. What's up, Corey? Good to see you tonight, man. Uh, he said, how's the QB playing? Uh, yeah, they looked good, dude. They looked they looked really good. Uh, they looked they looked really good. Maybe trust the ball strategy for the early games. It's hilarious. It might have to be. might have to be a little bit more run than what uh, Ryan Day likes. And Matt Butcher's in the house from Australia. So it's good. Good Monday morning, guys. <laughs> Crazy. All right, man. That's that. Anything else? No. No, I think that's a, a good assessment of the uh, week one. And, uh, man, hope things get better in week two for that offensive line. 